6. Isaiah 9, 6. A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His names will be Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God, Eternal Father and Prince of Peace. Gifts of Christmas, peace. Salvation from being troubled. Dear God, we thank you for your son Jesus. And we thank you for the many forms, the many essences of salvation that you give us through him. Sa sandaling ito, Panginoon, ipaunawa mo sa amin ang mahalagang bahagi at kahulugan ng pagsilang ng buhay at ministry ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Forgive us our sins, cleanse us, Father, enable us to hear your voice, and we want you to be our pre preacher, our teacher. Guide us, O God. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray with thanksgiving. Mark 4, 35-41 That evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross on the east side. So they left the crowd, and his disciples started across the lake with him in the boat. Some other boats followed along. Suddenly, a storm struck the lake. Waves started splashing into the boat, and it was about to sink. Jesus was in the back of the boat with his head on a pillow, and he was asleep. His disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? Jesus got up and ordered the wind and the waves to be quiet. The wind stopped and everything was calm. Jesus asked his disciples, Why were you afraid? Don't you have any faith? So they were more afraid now than ever and said to each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Isang napakapamilyar na kwento at hindi maubusan ng aral sa atin. Ang Panginoon ay naglakbay kasa isang sasakyang dagat kasama ang kanyang mga alagad at sa gitna ng dagat ay biglang nagkaroon ng malaking bagyo. Natakot ang mga alagad habang si Jesus naman ay buong tahimik na natutulog doon sa may likurang bahagi ng bangka at nakasandal pa man din sa unan at napakahimbing ng tulog. Ginising siya ng mga alagad at sinabing, hindi ba kayo nababahala? Nalulubog na tayo at mamamatay dito. At si Jesus ay pinatahimik ang bagyo at ang hangin. At sumunod siyempre yung tumahimik ang mga alon at sabi niya sa kanyang mga alagad, bakit kayo natatakot? Why were you afraid? Wala ba kayong sapat na pananalig? At matapos yun ay lalo namang natakot ang mga alagad dahil sabi nila, sino ito? Bakit pati hangin, pati bagyo sumusunod sa kanya? So their experience was fear after fear. Anong kinalaman ng Pasko dyan? Anong kinalaman ng pagkakasilang ni Jesus dyan? Because the gift of Christmas mainly is peace. Salvation from being afraid, from being troubled. Not salvation from what makes you afraid, but salvation from becoming afraid. The gift of life, of the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus is peace in spite of life's storms. Kapayapaan, katahimikan ng loob, katiningan ng loob, kahit may mga bagyo sa kabila ng mga dumadanas natin na mga daluyong, mga habagat, mga bagyo sa buhay. Peace because of faith in God through Jesus. Matthew 6.25 I tell you to not worry about life. And when you are told to not worry about life, kakambal nun is to not worry about death or the possibility of death. Peace because of God in Jesus or because of Jesus. And in faith, don't worry about storms. Dalawa ang nangyaring himala dito sa kasaysayan. Ang pagpatahimik ng bagyo at yung hindi nakita na himala, yung puso ni Jesus na hindi naligalig kahit may bagyo. John 14.1 Jesus said to His disciples, Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in Me. Mas maraming pananalig, mas konti ang takot. Mas maraming takot, ibig sabihin, mas kokonti ang pananalig. 
And Jesus says it is useless to worry, to be afraid, and to be troubled. Matthew 6.27, can worry make you live longer? Sa pag-aalala ba, napapahaba ang buhay? Sino nga bang nakakaalam ng haba at iksi ng buhay? Merong mga taong may sakit, ang lubha-lubha, akala mo mauuna ng sumakabilang buhay. Yung pala merong isang mas malusog at batang-batang, mas nauna pa, hindi natin alam. Nobody can tell. So anong matuto, mapapala ng tao na mag-alala at mag-isip tungkol sa kamatayan o tungkol sa ganito mga issues ng buhay? And we're here talking about enjoying the gift of Christmas. Kahit ilang Pasko ang dumating sa buhay ng tao, kung hindi ka papayapa sa iyong loob, kung kada bagyo at hangin at lindol, kada sakit o kaya ay kakapusan at paghihirap ng pananalapi, ay lagi kang matatakot. Parang walang Paskong nangyayari sa buhay. Kasi ang pinakamalaking binibigay ng kapaskuhan ng pagkakasilang ni Jesus, ng buhay at ministry ni Jesus, ay yung magkaroon tayo ng pagbabagong loob na magkaroon ng kapayapaan kahit may bagyo. John 14.27 I give you peace. The kind of peace only I can give. It isn't like the peace this world can give. So don't be worried and afraid. Yung pinakamalaking pangako ng Panginoong kapayapaan, kapayapaan na nakasalalay sa pananalig natin sa Kanya, sa Kanya mga pangako, at sa Ama sa Langit na nagsugu sa Kanya, yung kapayapaan na yon ang number one gift ng buhay ni Jesus sa atin. Payapa tayo na meron tayong buhay na walang hanggan at payapa tayo ano man ang mangyari sa buhay na ito ay nasa kamay tayo ng Panginoon. Pag hindi natin na-enjoy yung kapayapaan na yon sayang ang ministry ng Panginoon. Kapayapaan na wala sa pangangatwiran ng mundo. Kapayapaan na walang logic kung tutuusin. Kapayapaan na nakabatay sa walang patakarang pananalig. And this is really the gift. Yung may pananalig ka na hindi ka matinag na kahit ano nangyayari sa paligid, napakalaking gift yon. How do you enjoy the gift of Christmas? Believe in Jesus. Not in any other person, not in any other teaching whose doctrines oppose the teachings of peace of Jesus. Believe in Jesus' message of peace. And this peace is peace of mind, if we can add. It's not peace around us because it never happened that there's really peace around us. Kung sinasabi ni Jesus na peace I give you, eh yung walang bulkang buputok, walang ilog na babaha at aapaw, yung walang gerang sasabog sa mga paligid natin, yung walang tagutom o kahirapan, hindi nangyari yun kahit kailan na merong ganung uri ng kapayapaan ng planeta. There was always trouble anywhere and everywhere around the planet. So what kind of peace is Jesus, talk, Jesus talking about? It's not peace outside of us, but peace inside of us. Jesus does not promise a trouble-free life. He promises and He gives peace in spite of troubles and storms. Hindi ka payapaan dahil lang wala kang sakit. Paano kung may sakit ka, hindi ka na payapa? Hindi ka payapaan dahil lang marami kang pera. Paano yung kung wala kang pera? Hindi ka payapaan dahil may bagyo. Dahil kahit anong gawin mo, may bagyo may bagyo lagi. So ang kapayapaan ay pinapangako ni Jesus ay hindi yung kondisyon sa ating kapaligiran, kundi kondisyon sa loob ng ating puso dahil sa malalim at matibay na pananampalataya. Observe the story. There was the storm. It was the same storm experienced by Jesus who was sleeping and by the disciples who were afraid. Jesus' mind was compared to the disciples' mind was very different. His mind was peaceful. The disciples' minds were very troubled. And compare Jesus' peace with that of the disciples' fear and trouble. Pareho lang silang nakasakay doon. Pareho lang silang sinisiklot-siklot ng alon at ng hangin. Pareho lang sila na kung totoo sila'y nanganganib, pero magkaibang magkaiba ang kalagayan ng kanilang puso. Magkaiba kasi ang kalagayan ng kanilang pag-iisip. 
Jesus' promise of peace is mental, not physical, not situational. Hindi yung peaceful ka dahil ang maganda ang relasyon yung mag-asawa. Pag hindi na, hindi ka na peaceful. Hindi yung peaceful ka lang dahil tumutubo ang negosyo mo. Pag nalulugi, hindi ka na peaceful. Ito yung klase ng peace na hindi umaasa sa out, outside forces. Jesus' promise of peace is internal, not external. It is spiritual, not material. Pag ang atin lang aasahan, titingnan, bibilangin, susukatin ang mga nasa paligid, lagi lang tayong matatakot. Hayan, nauubos na ang ating savings. Hayan, dadami na ang ating gastos. Hayan, lumalala na ang sakit. Hayan, nagkakaproblema na tayo. Pag doon ka sumandal para magkaroon ng kapayapaan, di ka napapayapa kahit kailan. John 16.33 I have told you this so that you might have peace in your hearts because of me. While you are in the world, you will have to suffer. But cheer up, I have defeated the world. So sinabi niya, sinasabi ko ang lahat ng ito, itinuturo ko ang lahat ng ito para magkaroon kayo ng kapayapaan. Saan? Sa loob ng inyong puso. Dahil sa akin, hindi dahil sa kapaligiran. Habang nasa mundo kayo, magdurusa kayo, natural. Si Jesus man ay nagdusa sa mundo, sapagat ang mundo'y bayan ng hinagpis, sabi nga ni Balagtas. This is a distorted, twisted world because of everything that had happened around us in the past and now. Pero sabi niya, huwag kayong panghinaan ng loob. Mabuhayan kayo ng loob dahil nagapi ko na ang nasanday digan. Jesus had defeated death, the extreme enemy. So what else is there to fear? May hihigit pa ba sa kamatayan? Kaya ka naman takot kumisang pag umuuga yung aeroplano, baka mag-crash, baka ka mamatay. Pero kahit mag-crash yun, sure na hindi ka mamamatay, baka hindi ka matakot eh. Bakit ka matatakot sa sakit? Baka ikamatay mo. Pero kung yung kamatayan na pinakadulo, pinaka-extreme, pinakasagad na na pwede katakutan, ay nagapi na ng Panginoon, ano pa naman ang nakakatakot? Yun ang napakalinaw na argumento. 1 Corinthians 15, 54-57 The bodies we now have are weak and can die, but they will be changed into bodies that are eternal. Then the scriptures will come true. Death has lost the battle. Where is its victory? Where is its sting? Sin is what gives death its sting, and the law is the power behind sin. But thank God for letting our Lord Jesus Christ give us the victory. At kung hindi naman mamamatay ang katawan, eh, hindi naman magsisimula yung buhay na walang hanggan. So sabi, kahit nga mamatay kayo, hindi naman nakakatakot yan. Entry nyo nga yan into eternity. So ano pa ang dapat ikatakot? Romans 14.8 If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So anong dapat tumakot sa tao? Pag ito na-internalize natin, kahit lang 10%, ang dami-daming needless fears ang mawawala sa ating buhay. Sabi sa Romans 8.37, In everything, we have won more than a victory because of Christ who loves us. Peace is not the absence of trouble. It's not the absence of storms. It's not the absence of disappointments or failure or loss. It's not the absence of pain. Peace is the presence of the kingdom of God. Peace is the rule of God through Jesus in our hearts. Sa ating puso ang kapayapaan. Kaya ano man ang mangyari sa labas, ano man ang gulong mangyari, pag ang ating puso ay pinaghaharian ni Jesus, ang ating puso ang kaharian ng Diyos, tayo ay matatahimik. Kaya ang hinihilig natin, hindi naman yung dalin tayo sa kaharian ng Diyos, kundi mapasa amin ang kaharian mo. Thy kingdom come to where? into our hearts. Pag sinabing pinapalawak natin ang kaharian ng Diyos, it's not a political kingdom. 
dinadagdagan mo mga puso na pinagaharian ni Jesus. At kung si Jesus na nagahari, there will be peace. Peace is the presence and the nearness of Jesus. Not the absence of storms. Not the distance from storms. Romans 8, 38 to 39. I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not life or death. Not angels or spirits. Not the present or the future. And not powers above or powers below. Nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Pag ating pinagbulay-bulayan, iisip-isip, ipinanalangin, at bumabad tayo ng bumabad sa ganito mga isipin, hihina hanggang mawala, isa-isa, ang marami nating kinakatakutan sa buhay. Ang marami nating mga agam-agam, ang marami nating pag-aalala. Peace is the birth of Jesus into the world. But more than that, it is the birth of Jesus into our hearts. Peace is the rule of Jesus in one's heart. Yung sinasabi siya, isinilang sa samsaban, isinilang sa ganito. It's a metaphor also. Dahil lang samsaban na yun, dapat ang ating puso. Yung manger na yun, dapat ang ating puso. Dapat isilang doon si Jesus. Yung tinatawag natin born again experience, conversion, yung pagtanggap sa Panginoon, pagkakaroon ng buhay na muli, dapat may bunga. At ang bunga noon, kapayapaan. Peace is the coming of God's kingdom into one's mind. Nang isip natin, kung mag-isip, ay parang si Jesus. May bagyo, pero natutulog. Tinutulugan lang yung bagyo. Kasi kahit naman di ka matulog, may bagyo pa rin eh. Katulad ng mga nag-aalala, kahit naman di ka makatulog, hindi rin masosob yung inaalaalala mo. Mabuti pa, patulog ka na lang. Baka pag lumusog ka, mas magkaroon ka ng power na solve yung problema mo. Napaka-importante na yung isip natin ay pagharian ni Jesus. That the kingdom of God is in our mind, in our hearts. Luke 17.21 Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is not in the clouds. The kingdom of God is not in some temple somewhere. The kingdom of God is in our hearts. Ang tunay na kaharian ng Diyos ay sa ating puso. Ang tunay na kaharian ng Diyos ay yung Siya ang nagahari sa ating isip. Na kung mag-isip tayo, parang si Jesus. To be Christ-like. Discipline your mind, therefore, to believe in and focus on Jesus. Not focus on the storms and troubles of life. Siyempre, kailangan naman pansinin natin yung mga suliranin, yung mga challenges para magawa natin ng what is humanly possible to add to its solution. But the focus is on Jesus, on the style, the thoughts, the teachings of Jesus. Hindi dun sa pananakot, sa pag-aamba ng mga nasa paligid natin. And peace of mind is not about change in the world. It's not about change in the weather. It's about change in our minds. Kahit may bagyo, kung yung isip mo, payapa, payapa ka. Pero kahit walang bagyo, pag ang isip mo hindi payapa, para ding may bagyo. Daig pa. So ang pinakamahalagang magapi ay hindi yung bagyo sa labas, kundi yung bagyo sa loob ng ating puso. Kung lagi mong gagawing kondisyon na walang bagyo, walang lindol, walang baha, walang problema, walang sakit, parang gusto mo ng palitan ng buong mundo para lamang ka sumaya at tumahimik. At sabi sa 1 Corinthians 5.10, you would have to leave this world to get away from everyone and all the troubles. Kung ayaw mo na may nakikita kang kaaway, kailangan sa ibang planeta ka tumira. Pag ayaw mo yun na may competition, dapat nag-iisa ka, tumira ka sa, sa isang tala sa isang bituin. Wala kang kakompetensya. 
kung ayaw mo may suliranin, lumipat ka sa paraiso, kung nasan man yun. Kailangan palitan mo ang buong mundo. Samantalang, ang ipinapangako ni Jesus na papalitan ay ang ating puso. So, niya, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to give you a new mind. Peace of mind is not getting what you want, not setting conditions. It's about change in the believer's mind. To change what can be changed and to accept what cannot be changed. Romans 12, 2, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Sabi ko ka na makiayon sa takbo ng sanlibutan na laging naguguluhan, natatakot. No, kailang magbago ka at ang pagbabago ay nasa pagbabagong loob, sa pagbabago ng iyong isip, sa pagbabago ng takbo ng iyong utak. Colossians 3.15-16 So let the peace that comes from Christ control your thoughts and be grateful. Let the message about Christ completely fill your lives. With thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Makikita dito ang formula ng mapayapang buhay. I mean, ganun, yung thoughts mo, ipakontrol mo kay Jesus. Huwag mong ipakontrol sa iba. Huwag mong ipa-influence sa mga mananakot, mahilig manakot. Huwag mong ipa-influence sa patakaran ng mundo kung ano dapat ang tahimik. Sabi nga ganun. Kailangan ng mensahe ni Jesus ay umapaw sa iyong puso. Walang space para sa iba. At umawit ka ng mga papuri, pasalamat sa Diyos. So, be thankful instead of troubled. Thankful and thankful thoughts will change your mind. There is, there seems to be a secret here. That to change your mind, be thankful first. Para ka mapayapa, maging mapagpasalamat muna. Mag-isip ka na may pagpapasalamat, may pagpupuri sa Diyos. At kaiisip mo nun, maiiba ang takbo ng iyong isip. Siya yung stimulus para matak- maiba ang pattern of your thought. Be thankful. Kaya napakalaking blessing yung thankful. Pagka kayo ikaw umaawit ng sing- songs of praises, bakit ba pinupuri ang Diyos? Bakit laging pinapasalamatan ang Diyos? Bakit laging itinataas ang Diyos? Sabi ng iba, ganun po ba ka narcissistic ang Diyos? Ganun ba siya ka self-centered? Kailangan siyang laging purihin, pasalamatan, itaas. You know why, believers? Because God is in you. God is in us. We were created in God's image and we are the residents of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the living God. So when you worship God, when you praise God, when you give thanks to God and glorify God, nadadamay ka na rin, you also get edified. Kasi pinupuri mo yung Diyos na nasa puso mo, itinataas mo yung Diyos na nasa puso mo, eh di pati puso mo, natataas na rin. That's why it is edifying to worship the Lord. It is edifying to praise God and to be grateful and to Be thankful to God because all of this very positive spirit that you give to God, you also actually receive because God is in you. Pero kung ang Diyos ay iyong kinakalaban, ang Diyos ay iyong tinataliguran, pinagtatampuhan, pinipintasan, inaaway, sinisiraan, nadadamay ka rin because that God who lives in you, when you direct many negative spirits and thoughts about that God, ikaw din, na tinitira ng Diyos na yun, ay madadamay at madadamay. Kaya nagtataka yung iba, bakit po kaya pag masarap ang awitan, nagpapapuri, para akong lumulutang, sa matala ang Diyos naman ang pinupuri. Eh kasi, ang Diyos ay nasa iyo. Naambunan ka ng grasya. But if you grieve God, if you grieve the Holy Spirit, ikaw din lulungkot, magkakapipipipim, parang papel ang mukha mo, matutuyo ka. Sabihin, bakit kaya ganun ito? Parang dry na dry. Eh kasi dry din ang relationship niya sa Diyos. Pati siya. Magiging reflection noon. That's why it's always good to change your mind by being thankful first. Gusto mong matakot? Mag-isip ka muna ng lahat ng hindi nakakatakot. Ipagpasalamat mo yun sa Diyos. 
Marami kang discontentment sa buhay. Isipin mo muna lahat ang dapat mo ipagpasalamat at ipagpapasalamat mo. At mamaya makikita mo yung isip mo, sumusunod na sa iyo mga pasalamat. Mamaya naging habit mo na yon, Naging habit mo na maging to praise God and to thank God na iba na ang takbo ng iyong utak na siyang magbibigay daan para maiba ang takbo ng iyong buhay. Change your mind by changing your thoughts first. It is something that you can consciously do. It is something within your power as a human being to change your thoughts. And when you change your thoughts, the entire thought pattern will change and it will give you and bring you to a good direction. Do not let your mind think on automatic. Bakit? The automatic way the mind thinks is to end in fear. Pag hindi ka conscious, hindi mo kinontrol, hindi mo nilabanan, ang pupuntahan lahat ng iniisip mo, fear. Fear na maghirap, fear na magkasakit, fear na mamatay, fear this, fear that. Yun ang automatic eh. Kasi sobrang na tayong na-condition in a culture of fear. That's why Jesus wanted that changed. And by praising God and thanking God and disciplining yourself, control and direct your mind with the Jesus thought, which is peace. Kaya importante na alam natin, kinakabisa, minememorya, nire-recite, inuulit-ulit ang mga teachings ni Jesus. Hindi teachings ng iba. Ang ending, matatakot ka lang. Have the Jesus mindset. Not the usual mindset full of fears. Pag binasa mo ang dyaryo, tatakutin ka. Kahit mga religious activities, pag purong end of the world, puro mga judgment, puro hell, matatakot ka. Hindi naman yan ang central teaching ni Jesus. Ang central teaching ni Jesus, rest. Come to me all of you who are tired and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. My peace I give to you. My peace I give you, not as the world give. Do I give? Yan ang mga central teaching ni Jesus. Love others, love yourself. Na inire-reflect ni Solomon. Enjoy whatever there is to enjoy in this life. Then meet your Creator. Pagka sa iba ka pa nakinig, sayang, takot lang ang ending. Wala ka na-achieve. Have a new mentality. And when you have a new mentality, you will have a new person, a new personality. A personality that is positive, that is optimistic, that is forward-looking, that is joyful and rested. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If anyone is in Christ, He's a new creation. The old is gone. The new is here. At yung new creation na yun, hindi lang ibig sabihin, now you are heaven bound, now you have eternal life. No. Well, that also means that way, but it also means that you have a new mindset. Naiibang yung pag-isip, naiibang yung asal, naiibang yung lifestyle. So have a new heart, a new mind. Have a new mentality and a new outlook. A positive one. One that is not fearful. One that is rested. The birth of Jesus brings, Jesus gives a precious, unusual gift. Peace in spite of trouble. Not peace because there is no trouble. Kasi kung ganoon ang gagawin mong kondisyon, hindi ka na magkakaroon ng peace. Ang lagi nating nakikita at hinihinging miracle is the stilling of the storm. Ang pagpapatahimik sa bagyo, himala. Pero may mas mahalagang himala na dapat natin laging hingin at ating pagsikapan na laging maganap. Hindi ang pagpapatahimik sa bagyo, kundi ang pagpapatahimik sa ating kalooban kahit may bagyo. That is the more feasible thing to do, spiritually speaking. You cannot ask God to stop every volcanic eruption or every flood rising or every storm brewing. You cannot stop, ask God to stop every political trouble happening in the world because He would have to turn everyone into a robot to control the political climate of the world. You cannot ask God to continuously intervene and change the laws of nature just for you to have peace. Meanwhile, you can always ask God to quiet your heart. Isn't that the more profound miracle? Mas malaking himala yun kaysa patahimikin ng bagyo eh patahimikin ang loob mo. Kasi kung hindi naman tahimik ang loob mo kahit walang bagyo, magulo ka pa rin. Pero kung tahimik ang loob mo, anumang bagyo mangyari dyan, tahimik ka, yun ang ating hingin, 
Yan ang ating pagsikapan na madisiplina because you can change your mind by changing the way you think. And you can change your life by changing the way you think because as you think, you become. As you become, that becomes your life. Meron tayong kontrol sa mangyayari sa ating buhay. Sisimula natin sa pagkukontrol ng ating pag-iisip. Itaboy ang mga nakakatakot. Kasi kahit naman kupkupin mo yan, kandungin, alagaan, hindi ka naman yan mamahalin, lalo ka lang tatakotin. Itaboy ang mga, mga nakakatakot na bagay at gawin mo lang ang kaya mong gawin. Para yung mga nakakatakot masolve mo, lumiit ang kanilang control sa iyong buhay o ang kanilang negative effect, but do not let them rule your life. Jesus gives a precious, unusual gift and this is peace through a change of mind, change of attitude, not of situation. Gano sa atin karami mga kapatid ang nasa isang sitwasyon na dasal tayo ng dasal na mabago pero hindi naman talaga nababago. Hindi ba kayo nakakahalata? Kung hindi talaga nakatakdang mabago, huwag natin pagpilitang ipabago sa Diyos. Ang hingin natin, baguhin ang ating attitude. Baguhin ang ating pag-iisip. Baguhin ang ating reaksyon sa mga nangyayari sa buhay. Peace based on faith that Jesus teaches His people to be at peace. Yun lang sabi ni Jesus, be at peace. Eh dapat at peace ka na kasi utos niya yun eh. Yung palang sapat ng dahilan to be at peace. Kung susundin mo lang. But it's also a peace based on the faith that Jesus knows why His people could have peace in spite of. Dahil alam niya ang lahat. Kung siya ang nagsasabing mamaya, maging payapa ka, kahit sa tingin natin ay parang hindi pwede, ay eh, siyang may sabi, therefore, alam niya kung bakit pwede, manalig na lang tayo. Believe, because though believers might not exactly fully know why, hindi mo naman kailangan maintindihan ang lahat para kasumunod. Naintindihan mo ba lahat ang lahat ang chemical law, physical laws, all the laws of electricity, all the laws of the planets, and all the laws of gravity. Naintindihan ba natin lahat dyan? Pero nakikinabang din lang tayo. Hindi natin kailangan maintindihan kung bakit tayo pinapatahimik ni Jesus. Magtiwala tayo na pag sinabi niya, pwede yun, at yun ang pinakamainam para sa atin. It is faith in Jesus, not knowledge of events, that gives peace. Sometimes the more you know, the more troubled you get. But to have faith. Faith is childlike. Faith is not logical. Subukan mo maging logical, puro problem at puro fear ang mangyayari sa buhay mo. In areas where you need to be strong, where you need to have peace, work on faith. Hebrews 12.2 We must keep our eyes on Jesus who leads us and makes our faith complete. Kaya hindi tayo group of philosophers. Tayo ay family of believers. Hindi laging logic and reason ang pinapaandar. Because believers walk by faith, not by sight. And it is faith, not sight, that will give you peace. When you depend only on sight, you will probably be troubled all the time. For peace, depend on inner faith, not on outward events, not on human logic, not even on reason. 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we live by faith, not by sight. Develop, practice, apply faith, and enjoy one of the most precious gifts of Christmas and of all time. And very importantly, give away the gift of Christmas. Share, plant and propagate, multiply the faith that brings inner peace. Lagi tayo nag-iisip, ano kayong may regalo kay nanay? Ano kayong may regalo kay husband? Ano kayong may regalo kay ana, kay kuya? Well, wala namang pumipig sa ating magregalo ng mga bagay na naibabalot at nalalagay ng ribbon. Pero nakapagregalo na ba kayo ng kapayapaan? Kasi yun ang tunay na regalo ng Pasko. Nabigyan niyo naman ng kapayapaan ng kapwa na sa isang salita niyo lang, sa isang assurance, sa isang himas at hagod, yung mapapayapa ang kanyang loob. This is the profound gift. Bigyan natin sila ng kapayapaan. Mga anak, 
bigyan nyo ng kapayapaan ng mga magulang nyo na pag sinabi nyo nasa school kayo, ay nasa school nga. Na pag sinabi nyo kayo nag-aaral, ay nag-aaral lang kayo at hindi ko ano-anong mga himala ang pinagagagawa. Mga asawa, hindi nyo ang kapayapaan ng inyong partner na pag hindi kayo nakikita, ay tahimik ang loob niya at hindi nyo iniisip na kung ano-anong kaaliwas-wasan ang inaadupag. Regalo ng kapayapaan, yun ang tunay na Pasko. Kahit magregalo ka niya ng napakalakit, napakamahal, eh hindi naman siya payapa, bagabag ang loob niya. Di bali wala. At higit sa lahat, dali natin ang Panginoon sa buhay ng mga tao. And the Jesus of the Gospels, the Jesus that we know, the Jesus that loves and forgives and cares, at hindi yung Diyos na laging galit, laging nananakot at laging nagpaparusa ang dadali niya sa mga tao. Kilalanin niyo ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng mga lente ni Jesus. We should look at God through the lenses of Jesus, the lenses of love, the lenses of forgiveness, of unconditional acceptance of people. Pagkaganoon lang naman tayo mapapayapa. Yung mga miyembro ng inyong pamilya na hindi nyo matanggap-tanggap ang ganito niyang natural self, ang ganito niyang natural talent or lack of it, para siya mapayapa, kailangan nyo siyang tanggapin. Don't continuously reject people. And don't continue to reject the situation of your life. Kahit ayaw nyo, kung hindi nyo naman matanggal-tanggal, mahirapan lang kayo na makipagtunggali dyan. Tanggapin nyo and have the peace of Jesus. Trust Jesus that He knows what's best. Beyond our logic and beyond our intelligence. Do not use faith to scare people. But use faith to give them peace. Do not use religiosity to scare people. Use religiosity to put people at ease, to give rest to their spirit, to their soul, even to their body. And do not use religion to give people burdens and discomfort. Share religion, share the faith, share the Lord, so people could find rest, unconditional acceptance in the heart of God. Ano ang ibig sabihin sa atin ang peace? Itanong natin sa sarili natin, ano bang gumugulo sa inyo ngayon? Ano ba ang nakakatakot? Panginoong Diyos, ipinagkakatiwala po namin sa inyo ang mga bagay na bumabagabag at gumugulo sa amin, mga bagay na nagbibigay sa amin ng takot, pangamba, pag-aalala, ituro mo na ang lahat ng ito ay maaari namin isuko sa inyo tulad nung bagyo, isinuko ng mga disciples kay Jesus at ito'y pinapayapa niya. Pero higit sa pagpapayapa ng mga physical storms, ang hiling namin, payapain niyo po yung spiritual storm inside of us. Ang aming mga concerns and worries, ipagtiwala namin sa inyo as we do our humanly best possible effort, ipagtiwala namin sa inyo ang lahat-lahat ng iba pa. Panginoon, ano po ang gumugulo sa inyo mga anak? What troubles? Teach us to trust you. Teach us to have unconditional faith in you. At ang dalangin namin ngayon, Panginoon, sa lahat ng mga anak mong narito, hindi lang yung patahimikin mo yung pagyo around us, patahimikin niyo po ang aming puso. This is possible because you told us that we can have your peace. This is doable because you have shown us the way. Magbulay-bulay tayo, mga kapatid, sa ilang saglit na katahimikan at isuko niyo sa Panginoon ang anumang tumatakot, gumugulo sa inyo ngayon. At hingin nyo na palitan ang inyong pag-iisip, ang inyong attitude, at palitan nyo ng kapayapaan, ang pagtitiwala, na nagbubunga ng kapahingahan at ginhawa. Lord, as your people have a one-on-one -on -one with you, as your people bring to you what is in their hearts, let your love rule our lives. Let your peace govern our lives. Mapag-isa tayo sa Panginoon at isuko, isumbong, dalhin natin, ihingi ng kapayapaan ang kung ano-anong gumugulo sa atin. And the miracle that is really great, not stealing the storm outside, but stealing the storm inside, can happen as you believe. People of God, spend quiet time with the Lord.